What is up, Moto Buddies? Welcome to the Taco Shop. This is Mike from Taco Moto Co. and Baja Taco Tours. Got a clean little bike here for you. Two of them, as a matter of fact. These are a father and son pair of bikes. These are identical 450, uh, 2019 450 XCFs. Uh, everything that we've done to one, we've done to the other. So we're just going to profile this particular one. This is Dad's bike. And... I think the only thing that's especially unique about this one is he's had his suspension valved and sprung for his weight. So that's a one-off to this bike. But otherwise, everything else is identical between the two. We set these bikes up for this father and son team who went on a father and son trip to Mexico earlier this year in 2020. And these bikes got the, the Baja makeover treatment. We did, I think, uh, three days on the bikes down on the Pacific side south of Ensenada, and we went down as far as San Catin um, to the Santa Maria Hotel, and that was that was our southern uh, dip, and then um, I think we started out at Colonet Point, Paradiso de Colonet, the hotel there. So these two bikes did really well. They've each now got about 30 hours on them. These guys have done some riding in Southern California in Ocotillo Wells and other areas, and they wanted these machines to be not only Baja ready, but like Southwest and uh, particularly Southern California desert ready. And so that's what we did. Um, these, we didn't really go crazy on these. We didn't turn them into like full radical Baja adventure bikes. So you can see it's got the stock gas tank on there. And uh, on our trip, we didn't do extreme days. And when they're out riding, they're they're basically truck supported, so they didn't a lot of didn't need a lot of fuel capacity. We didn't go crazy with the power. Uh, we didn't we didn't do um, a lot of stuff that you might do on like one of those radical bikes. But they just wanted something that was very serviceable, usable for the deserts, and that's what we ended up with here. Um, so we've done some things that made these Baja ready. Like, for example, in the tires, we have moose. We have Michelin bib moose in both of these. And um, we, you notice here that we've balanced them out, too. So we've got our Taco Motoco wheel weights here, the brass weights. And we're directly opposite of the rim lock. And since that's a stock rim lock, that's two and three-quarter ounces is what we've got back here. The moose, those bridge stones running in the stock tires. And we use, on all of our moose mounts, we use silicone, either the silicone grease that comes in the tube with the moose or we use a thick weight silicone oil we never use soap uh, i know guys use soap i do not we never do that soap dries out it deteriorates it washes out with water we do a lot of water crossings when we're out on our rides and so we want something that won't wash out and then won't turn into a paste the um those soaps they're vegetable based it's a vegetable oil based product and those things will dry out and it'll get sticky and gooey in there and and we like to have longer service lives out of our moose. So we only use silicone, always and exclusively. Um, and then we check them. We probably break those moose down for sure once a year, maybe twice a year to check on them. Just clean them and then relube them. And that's a really important thing to do when you're running a moose. Let's stay down here low. So this is really cool. We've got the left hand brake system. And this is by Ox Brake. Chuck makes a great system. And this is a very clever setup. So basically what's happening here is this is a mini slave cylinder to the master cylinder up on the bars, which we'll take a look at in a minute. And it's hydraulic, hydraulically activated. So when you depress the lever up there, the hand lever on the left-hand side, you charge the hydraulic system through this hose right here. And then that activates the slave here. It might be tough to see, but underneath this little um, covering here, there is a piston that pushes up into the bottom of this master cylinder here, the standard master cylinder, which in a normal configuration would have sent a little eyelet and a plunger down and connected to the eight millimeter bolt here on the back of the brake lever. And so what Chuck has is this intermediate uh, slave cylinder here that takes the same space as that stock, you know, socket arm um, plunger. So when you press on the lever manually, you see what you're doing here is you're moving up the slave cylinder here, which is just pushing up into the plunger. If you activate on the left hand brake, then you activate the slave inside, which then pushes up the plunger on its own. The brake lever is not affected. You don't feel that with your foot and nothing happens to it. 
it's using the stop, so the brake lever stop bolt down here, that is what's taking care of the, the, the forces that are pushing this the, the brake lever in this direction. And then against that stop and this bolt, that is the, the fixed point for that plunger that goes up into the master cylinder on the rear brake and then activates the rear. So it's a, it's a super clever system. You don't have to break into the hydraulic system here on the rear. Um, the, the Recluse system, which is a very good system and has just come out with the version two, We'll do a product spotlight on that later on another bike. But on this particular one, the AUX system is just really effective, super damn clever, and you don't have to break into the hydraulic system. And then Chuck also has, has another version of this, and that's cable actuated. This has a much better responsiveness. Uh, it's a, you know, a lighter pedal feel, and then because it's hydraulic, there's more power to it. So um, it's more money, um, but I think it's really worth it. There's, there's, it's a great little setup. So if you're a fan of left-hand braking, take a look at the AUX system. It'll work really good for you. And then you just route the hydraulic cable up in here. Here it is there. And then you send it up in between the frame and then the side cover here. And then we trim that out a little bit. You, you kind of have to route the cable through here. And so we've trimmed out some of the plastic to accommodate that. And then it just snakes its way up under the tank and then up into the, into the bars. Here's... There it is right there, and it just makes a little loop. Comes up over the top, and you see it routed up along here. And there it is right there. And so that's your left-hand brake system. Uh, really, really awesome. We really like that. Let's go back over here. What did we miss? Okay, so the Recluse, uh, I think we have a CX going on in there. Um, Recluse is a great product. And then when you use the CX system, you're using their torque drive plates which are steel, and then you get two more, two more frictions and two more drives in there. And that transfers uh, torque better to the rear wheel, and it also dissipates heat a lot better. And so a, a, a lot of overheating that happens on bikes in like technical riding happens from the clutch. And the Recluse CX cuts down on engine temperatures and uh, coolant temperatures. So here's a quick aside. A lot of guys will want to do like, they'll ask me, should I do a thermostat delete to limit overheating on my bike. And if you know anything about the motocross bikes or the XCF bikes, they don't come with a thermostat. And yet guys boil these over all the time. And uh, the reason is, well, two of them is they generally, you know, stock, they don't come with a fan. And so you wanna add a fan. But then the other reason is just working the clutch. There's so much heat that's thrown into the engine oil and then into the coolant from the clutch. And so if you've got a better clutch, you'll have less heat. And um, and then of course you want a fan and that's really important and we added that too. And so while we're here looking at this fan, let's take a look at these engine radiator brackets, the, the radiator guards. So we use the Enduro engineering on this. And one of the reasons why I'm a fan of Enduro engineering for the radiator guards is their full wrap. Let me pull these rubber bands here you can see that it's a full radiator wrap. It goes all the way around. And why that's important is because if you're gonna be riding your bike in a situation where you're gonna be maybe laying it down, maybe falling into rocks, you're gonna take a lot of side hits, the standard stock radiator cover, radiator guard, as you know, it's, it's about an inch and a half and it just protects up to the front of the radiator. And this being a full wrap, we've got protection back here in the rear. So if we take a hit, we're gonna we're gonna uh, buffer against that that damage back here on the rear, and so the Enduro Engineering are, are really some of the only few guards that offer this full wrap protection, and they look really good. They've got very clever design, the way it mounts here, the way it brackets, the way it holds the side covers, the radiator scoops. Just a very um, uh, it, it's a brilliant design, and and the guys who came up with this have done a great job with it. The only thing that's tricky with it is when you add a Trailtech fan system, the bracketry for the Trailtech system does not fit around this, this rear bracket. So you have to get out your, your chop saw and do some modifying. And so what I did here was we mounted the fan just like if, so if you were mounting this to an EXC or an FE bike, a fan equipped bike where the fan was controlled through the ECU, uh, the ECU on this bike, 
they, they do not control a fan. So you have to control it through a thermostat, a, a separate thermostat. And on the Trailtech system, it's got this little metal bracket here. And the fan, when it came stock, was mounted to that bracket. So what we did was we removed the fan, mounted it directly to the Trailtech, I'm sorry, to the Enduro Engineering Guards, and then chopped off the arm, one of the arms here of the Trailtech mount, and then mounted it into the side panel here of the radiator guard. And so that's the Trailtech guard, well, not the guard, but that's part of the Trailtech system right there on the side. And that would have been integrated into the, the whole mounting system for the fan, which, which again, we had to remove all that. So this has to be modified to accommodate that. If you're gonna put these two together, you've gotta, you've gotta do that. I think it's worth the effort. I think both of these are best in class. I think that the, the guards offer a better level of protection than, than a lot of the other ones do. And the Trailtech fan is an obvious choice if, um, if your bike didn't come with a fan. So mating these two things together was important for the project and it just required that little bit of modification. So um, that's, that's our thoughts on why we use the Enduro Engineering on this bike. Has fork serviced. Um, again, valve and resprung RG3, Southern California did that for them. Nothing real special up here on the front other than the moose. And we do not run a rim lock. So if you're noticing, we don't have any wheel weights on the front. That's because I don't mount the front uh, with a rim lock. I don't put a rim lock on the front. There's no need to with a moose. And so there's no need to balance it. Uh, just dropping back here real quick. That's a TM Design Works skid plate. And on the linkage bikes, if you get it with the linkage guard, it comes with this little scoop down there that offers some protection. For that stock exhaust, we haven't done anything to the fueling on this bike. And we've got, uh, other than an end cap, but that, that didn't change the fueling. So these motocross bikes, they come with a mapping sufficient to run a full flow exhaust. So I've got the stock exhaust. This is what came off it. And that's a 40 millimeter, 40 millimeter outlet. The only problem with the stock is it does not have a spark arrestor. It's got this little bird screen or bug screen. I mean, that is... That's not a Forest Service spark arrestor. It's not Forest Service approved. So if you're gonna run these somewhere where that's an issue, you're gonna to need to change that out. And so we want the ProMoto billet that has the spark arrestor in it. And if you look at the, this is off an EXC. So this 450 engine is the same engine that's in a EXC machine, different mapping, but the hardware is all the same. It's got a different exhaust on the on the EXC and the F, or I'm sorry, in the XCF and the SXF bikes. They have a different header pipe here. It's different on the 500 and the 501, the Husqvarna version. So this is what you get when you get the street legal bike, the dual sport, and notice it has this obnoxious 30 millimeter plug here. So you've got a 40, it's like a 42 millimeter ID through pipe here, and then you're sending a 30 millimeter obstruction straight into that and so think of all the heat and power loss heat retention and power loss that's happening on one of the um, street legal bikes on the dual sport bikes versus these motocross bikes so these motocross bikes are very easy to throw on an end cap you don't have to change the mapping you don't need to do anything to it it will accommodate that promoto cap without any fuel mods whatsoever and so again we just did the end cap there because of the Spark arrestor stock seat. These guys don't really mind that too much. Up here on the grips, we put on the Pro Grip. These are the 714 rallies. Super squishy, really nice. We use spray paint to hold it on. And then I use safety wire. It's not super needed when you use the spray paint, but I think it adds that sort of factory look. Um, I just like to put that on there, so that's what we did. And we've got a lighting kit here. So up front, we've got the Moto Minded. This is the XL Pro. We can't push any more than that light off the stock stator. We could do like an XL80, which is 80 watts, um, but we would need to re replace or upgrade or upwind the stock stator, which we didn't want to do. So that XL Pro is what we get as far as the amount of, um, the max amount of power that we're going to be able to push with that stator. So we went with that light. And then what we did was we have this wired up. So instead of having that just be hot all the time, that's typically what you'll do when you add these is you wire them to the battery and then you run them on a switch. And so here we have an auxiliary power interrupt relay system so that when the bike is on, when the engine is on, then that switch goes hot. 
so we're not going to drain the battery when this is sitting in a garage or in a trailer transporting it and somebody accidentally clicked it on before we close the trailer um, so we did that on this setup and then we use the reflex racing guards this is the recurve so when they come over the top and then they become when the when the clamp becomes the bar top that is the recurve version the standard version has what you see a lot of times and that's just a c bracket where the the, the bar end here would come down and instead of making this dog leg over it would come straight and it would just grab the bars with you know a bolt c clamping type of setup this is sturdier and a little bit cleaner you can see that that's got a nice smooth you know very uncluttered appearance and then the brp um the the damper for the isolation on that for as far as the mounting goes and then the scott stabilizer that's all from jimmy over at brp and he does a great job with this stuff we went with the blue bushings instead of the red this is the little softer one um i think i think we've got a rider who's got a couple miles on him wanted to have as much you know wrist dampening as possible and he's a taller guy so we've got some spacers in here to bring the bars up to him instead of having him need to lean over to them again everything up here is uh, stock as far as um, most of what's going on uh, let's see if there's anything else interesting to talk about He's got his stock mapping, stock map switch here. I'm not super impressed with the map variance between the two and the traction control um, isn't really providing much of a wow factor. I think KTM, hopefully in the 21s, it's yet to be seen as far as the mapping difference and then the improvement that they might make to the traction control. I'm, I'm looking forward to that, getting getting our hands on one of the newer bikes. Hopefully they've done um, some, some revisions to that. I think they may have. Again, we talked about the aux braking system and this is all uh, basically like high-end mountain bike uh, hydraulic equipment and it's and it's absolutely suitable and it does a really good job we like that what you do is you have to stagger out the the angles so you get an angle for the the brake and then your angle here for the clutch and it takes a while to get used to one of the things that happens is you, you tend to until you get that muscle memory put your hand where the clutch may have been and so in in the the like there's a no man, there's a, you know, this dead zone right here that you sort of have to like get used to the fact there's nothing there. Your clutch is higher, your brake is lower. A um, couple of rides, you'll get used to that. It's a really, really cool little system, especially if you're going to be riding, say, some single track, very technical, rugged single track where you might need to have your right foot on the ground to not die and go off a cliff, uh, but you need your rear brake to be activated. And that is really where that system shines and and how it's um, best adapted to an off-road bike and i think that is about it a lot of that stuff was unchanged stock gearing um you know it's got the standard ktm does a good job with its components it's got a o-ring chain on there and um i think that's about it we didn't change anything as far as uh yeah fuel we talked about that. so that's your look on this bike let me point out something too. I think KTM is not quite getting getting um, doing the best they can. You know the graphics here on this bike are coming off. These side panels are stickers. Here, this stuff is integrated into the plastic, so they heat weld that in there. But these these bikes, so the 350, the 450, they each have different logo stickers, and that has not been integrated into the plastic. It's just a sticker, and and that's kind of underwhelming to see it deteriorate like that the other bike over here it came off so it's not even there anymore so if you're pressure washing these bikes you just want to be careful on the rear here the fact that you've got a sticker and not an application into the vinyl into the plastic itself um you know that gives you sort of a a, a window into a 30 hour bike um, and what may be going on with it i don't see anything else that's real problematic you know you've got typical wear scratches going on on those side panels on um, the chain uh, sprockets are wearing in really good and don't have any issues that i see on on any of that stuff so for the most part i'd say at 30 hours these bikes are holding up really well they haven't had any issues or breakdowns or concerns whatsoever we've just got like we talked about that one issue with the side plastic as far as fit and finish goes otherwise i think everything on these bikes has been really well so that's a look at two identical XEF 450 KTM 2019 bikes. 
and these make really good Baja bikes and overland bikes. I think the only, you know, I'll throw this one thing in. If you're looking at doing sort of a dual sport conversion to, with one of these XCF bikes, the the 350 is a is a six speed, but the 450s are five speeds. And I have no idea why they did not put the fifth speed or the sixth gear rather inside of that engine because when you get this as a 500 or a 501, it's got the sixth gear in there. It's only when it comes as the XCF that it doesn't have the sixth gear. You can convert that. It is um, obviously a big deal. You have to pull the engine. You got to split the cases. And the parts are not expensive as you're probably only $250 in parts to do it. But you've got all the labor and the involvement of pulling that motor out and pulling it apart. Very doable, um, but at, at an expense, huge expense of labor. Um, so that's a kind of a window into what's going on with these 450 XCFs. Um, like, subscribe, let us know in the comments if you have any thoughts about these bikes or using these machines the way we use them. And uh, as always, go out, get some adventure.